Okay, so here we go. Uh, last weekend we got the pitless installed. Got the, the downpipe laid out, um, just so it'd kind of relax, straighten up a little bit, uh, hopefully make it a little bit easier today. Um, so this is our well pump. It's a uh, one and a half horsepower, I think it's 12 gallons per minute if I remember right. Um, our well is 500 foot deep. We're only gonna put this guy down to 300 feet, uh, mainly because I don't have to put a uh, splice into the hose. Uh, our downpipe comes in 300 foot lengths, so if I need to lower it uh, later on, I can. I'm gonna make sure I've got some extra extra cable uh, and stuff on there so that I can do that if we need to. Um, but since our well's artesian, um, there's plenty of water stored in the well itself, so we should be okay there. Um, another reason I'm only going to 300 feet is if we were to pump it all the way down to the pump, uh, the downpipe is actually rated at 160 PSI. That's pretty common for this stuff. They've got some 200 PSI, but the inch and a quarter that we could get our hands on fairly uh, quickly uh, was uh, the 160 PSI. So every foot of head of water on top uh, is equal to a half of a PSI. So at 300 feet, that's 150 PSI uh, at the hose right here above the pump. Um, and we're gonna be pumping from here all the way up to a storage tank up at the top. So we didn't really wanna exceed our pressure limit on the on the pump uh, or on the downpipe so that's uh, another reason why we went with uh, only dropping it in 300 feet so but we still should have about 440 gallons of uh, usable water uh, for the pump to uh, pump out and that should be you know more than enough so, all right so we're gonna install this is gonna be uh, the this is a check valve and a barb fitting that are going to go into the top of the pump. I'm going to install them in the downpipe right now. Um, it's really important the check valve is a one-way valve. So they've got an arrow on them. Uh, the water only flows one direction. It won't flow the second direction. The pump comes with a check valve built into the top of it. Um, from everything I've read, um, and just kind of a comfort factor this is a much better check valve than what's inside of the pump and what it does is it prevents the water from running down the pipe uh, down the down pipe and spinning your pump backwards or possibly causing some damage to the uh, the impellers that are in the pump so that's why we're putting one right at the top of the pump uh, so to install this what we're going to do is we're going to heat this guy up with the propane torch get it get it nice and warm um, it'll, it'll show a little bit of sweat on the outside and we should be able to get this guy shoved in there and then we'll tighten down the clamps All right, so that's installed. Um, 
one thing I should mention, uh, and you can hopefully you can see it on here, for the clamps that you're using that are going to be submerged in the water or anything really associated with this, um, get all stainless steel. So not just the band. Um, sometimes they'll say stainless steel, but they won't be all stainless steel. You can see on the box here, these are all stainless steel. Um, sometimes the band will be stainless, uh, but maybe the screw or this little, this little piece right here that holds the screw in there for the worm drive, uh, maybe just standard steel and that'll rust out, then the clamp will come apart. So it kind of uh, defeats the purpose. So just spend the extra couple bucks, get the right stuff. Got the check valve, the barb installed in here. Um, you might be asking why I installed this in the pipe before I installed it in here. Uh, my thinking was that fighting with the pump, trying to get that in might be a little bit of a pain in the butt. So uh, I chose to do it this way. I don't know if it's the right way or not. Leave a comment if you think I'm wrong. So and we'll see how this goes. But I'm going to use some of this uh, Teflon paste, get it on here, get this guy tightened down. Um, and then we'll start uh, start wiring it up and putting the uh, this the safety uh, rope in. The pump we bought came with the uh, splice kit for the for the wiring. Um, it's got the non-insulated connectors and then some uh, uh, heat shrink. Um, so you can see how long of a wire there is there, how long the butt connector is. Uh, that's the middle of the butt connector. I've always gone through and trimmed it back so that I can get the wire right up to the middle piece and uh, The insulation is just poking out, so get that guy on there. Pump it in. Test it, pull it pretty good, make sure it's all good to go. And of course they shorted me one of these because this is a three wire pump, which actually means four wires. Um, this is your ground, they don't count that, so they probably sent me a, a three-wire uh, splice kit, so uh, luckily I've got an extra butt connector laying around, so I'll just use that over there. The ground probably isn't as crucial because it's, uh, it's, it's a ground, it's not really carrying any power or anything, so we will uh, make do, we'll be okay. Make sure if you're going to use the uh, the heat shrink, put them on now before you connect your wires because you won't get them on. <laughs> so just uh, try and remember to do that. Get mine on before I forget, and we're going to connect up. So. This is 10-3 submersible pump wire. I got a 500 foot roll um, because wasn't sure if I was gonna put the pump at 400 feet and I wasn't sure where I was gonna put the box at. So temporarily we're just gonna put the, the control box up here along with the circuit breaker. Um, but later on it will probably move up the road or closer to the holding tank that we're going to use uh, And I'll explain why we're going to use a holding tank later
so we got the electrical connected. Um, I just finished, uh, used the propane torch after I connected them to do the heat shrink. So the, the, the heat shrink, the seal, uh, the electrical connection kits that come with these well pumps or that you order for your well pump, um, it's, a, it's a special kind of heat shrink. Um, it seals it for being underwater in the environment that it's going into. So if you look at this thing, um, I've gotten it, you know, fairly hot and you can see on all of them how the sealant, uh, kind of, it's almost like hot glue in there. Basically when it, when it shrinks down on there, it kind of squashes in and then you should get a little bead of that sealant on each side. That's how you know that it's good. Um, once you've done that, good way to test it is to just get a five gallon bucket of water, put these in the water and then continuity check. You would put a probe into the water and then just continuity check at the each of, at the end of every, every, uh, lead. And then that would tell you if water is seeping into your connections, but we're good to go here. So now we're going to figure out installing the torque arrester and we'll get the wire secured to the line so that we can start dropping this thing in. Got our pump, the check valve. I installed the torque arrester. Um, so the torque arrester, the whole idea behind the torque arrester is that it makes contact with the casing down in the hole and it prevents, since that's a one and a half horsepower motor, it prevents it from hopefully spinning off of the threads on the, uh, on the connection here. So that's the point of the, point of the, uh, the torque arrestor. It also deadens any twists or spins that, that might happen um, on the downpipe. Uh, you know, one of these electrical cords rubbing against the casing or something, it might wear a hole in it. So I've got it set for the diameter of that. We installed our safety rope so that if something was to break or come disconnected, uh, that it's a safety, hopefully this will still be connected and we can still pull the pump up out of the well. So that'll run all the way the barb fittings that i that we're using have an eye for them and then the pump has an eye for the safety rope so i've gone through the eye on the barb fitting here that'll also act as a as an arrester if something was to try and spin free so now we're going to go through and secure everything to the downpipe uh, i still have to install this end of the pitless at the other end of the hose so we're going to work our way from the pump that direction. Um, everything I've been told, use the 3M electrical tape. It sticks better. Um, and we're going to go through and secure the wire every three to four feet. Um, I also understand that it's important to be on the inside bend since it's a roll hose so that you don't end up with big loops like this when you're putting it into the pipe. That just give it a spot for it to rub on the casing and uh, possibly cause a failure there. So I'm gonna go through, take the time, get this thing all secured and ready to go. Uh, everything hooked up here. I've been securing the electrical cable uh, up the down pipe, laying it out up here. Um, I've got probably 100, maybe 120 feet ready to go. Um, and instead of hooking everything up and then dragging all of that through the rocks and everything. What I'm going to try and do is get this first hundred feet stuffed down into the into the well, and then I'm going to come along and do another hundred feet or so, and run that down uh, till I get to the end. So here we go. up with the casing
All right, torque arrestor just went through. Just gonna watch this cord as we're feeding it down so we don't cut it. We had it hooked on a rock way up there, so it was kind of getting a little fighting us a little bit. I put this uh, blanket right here to protect the cable and everything from the edge. Now I'm just slowly feeding her down. Everything feels like it's going, going really nicely. Should be getting close to that first 100 foot. Not too bad going in. Alright. Alright, so oh no, I still got a little bit more. Should be able to tape up some more, get it all ready, and uh, we'll keep stuffing this thing in. We've been slowly feeding it in and then securing the electrical. Here we are finally to the end. I've got the uh, top side of the pitless adapter. It slides into the pitless. Um, it's already been threaded in. I'm um, going to install this right now and uh, then we'll settle this guy all the way into the hole. So that's all secure. Um, and when you start thinking about it, you've got a well pump that's about 50 pounds. Uh, you've got all of this copper wire, which is 100 pounds. This, uh, this pipe is like 100 pounds. So you got a lot of stuff hanging off of this guy. Um, so, uh, Pretty, uh, pretty cool. Make sure you you go with some quality stuff here, because there's uh, no use having a failure. So, I'm gonna try and uh, fish this guy into the bottom now, and uh, then we'll be done with this portion and uh, start on the cap. All right, so we're feeding in the last little bit. You can see it pretty much feeds itself. 
Every thing. Everything is suspended off of this guy right now. And here we go. Let's see if we can get this guy where we want it. And of course I can't. Can't see anything since our fuel is artesian. So I gotta open up. If I can get the water level drained down, I'll be able to see it. Let's see the pitless adapter. I think I'm sitting right on top of it right now. We're sitting in there tight on the on the pitless adapter. I'm gonna get a little bit of water out of there and uh, see if I can show you guys. All right, hopefully reflect, reflection doesn't get in the way, but you can see the pitless adapter uh, sitting right in the saddle there, um, in that uh, well casing that goes all the way down. So pumps in. There's 300 foot of downpipe and. Got the safety rope cable coming out. This is our well cap. It's a secure well cap so we can uh, lock it down, keep uh, anybody or any critters out of it. Um, it's got an O-ring uh, so that it can seal. It's got these uh, little Allen's, Allen head set screws. Uh, so that you set it down on the well. Um, a little O-ring there that seals it. And then this guy sits on top. Your electrical conduit comes through, comes out here. So since I don't want to cut any of this yet, and I still have a ton of it on the spool, I get to unroll it, thread it through, uh, and uh, just have it sitting here so that I can install it later on. Um, we're gonna do a temporary mount for the electrical box right here with the pump control uh, just so that we can run it uh, with a generator for the time being until the house is built up on the hill. Um, so uh, gonna get this installed now. I think I've done more walking installing this than ever. Alright, so all this stuff comes up. And through the conduit hole. I'm gonna make a big old mess that we'll clean up later. A little pile of tangled stuff.
Alright, so that's the base. Sits on there. I'm gonna go get my Allen heads, get that guy tightened down, orient this guy like that so that my stuff is all pointed in the right direction. And we can tighten down that uh, the top of that well cap and that thing will be ready. Um, and we're gonna run the conduit in the next video and hook up all the electrical and uh, turn this bad boy on. We are installing the cap. We've got uh, all the line and cord through the conduit hole. And now we're just tightening this guy down uh, so that it's secure. I will say that this is um, a cast aluminum cap and when I was tightening one of the little set screws, it of course snapped a little bit. It doesn't look like it's going to affect a lot, um, but uh, probably my fault for over tightening it. Uh, but I would still, ex I didn't tighten it that much. I'd still expect it to hold. So kind of disappointed in that. I'll probably reach out um, and uh, see if I can... Uh, either get a replacement part or find out what I did wrong there um, and uh, we'll go from there but let me correct it back here on the back it's still secure uh, so not too worried but uh, still sucks you don't want to break it on the first time uh, tighten down these bolts I was going to get an impact after I broke that other piece. I figured I'd just hand tighten it. Um, looks like everything's there. Got the little uh, stud that goes in. That's what you put your lock through. So I'll just drop that in and I think I got a lock laying around out here. I'll put that on there. I'm not really worried about anybody getting into it, but uh, better safe than sorry, I guess. So, well, there we go. Pump is installed. Electrical is out. Um, we're going to install a frost free hydrant uh, for a temporary uh, water solution. And we're, like I said, we're going to put a uh, temporary mount for the uh, control box and a fuse panel. So we can run it off of a generator um, just so that we've got water for uh, when we're up here in the trailer uh, we're doing icf so i assume that the concrete trucks will probably uh, greatly appreciate a washout down here so we'll make sure that we're all ready for that all right so uh we got the well pump installed we've got the uh, safety rope and the electrical kind of stored for right now until we get back up here. Um, shouldn't take a whole lot. We've just got to install the, uh, the electrical stuff over here. We'll make uh, the, okay, let's try that again. No, you, is it recording? Okay. All right, so we got the well pump installed. Uh, it's all the way down casings in uh, so part three we're going to do the electrical and we're also going to do the frost free hydrant so I started prepping some of this some of that stuff this morning um, I took a couple pictures they'll be up on Instagram if you want to check those out um, frost free hydrant electrical we'll build a little uh, why are you taking that well, we're going to use that T-post to mount the frost-free hydrant in. I uh, saw a really cool way of doing that online uh, using a bucket. Uh, the way frost-free hydrants work, we'll get into that next time, but they drain underground so that nothing is above the frost line and won't freeze. So stay tuned for part three and uh, 
make sure you like and subscribe if uh, what we're doing is helpful for you. Thanks.